Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are nobles in ancient Egypt and we are going to be dice drafting. We're going to be building up the town you, to you try sound, to be the best. You do not sound very energetic to be, the, to be the noblest of all the nobles. Takinu! Obelisk of the Sun! Ancient Egypt. Let's get to the table and check out Takinu, Obelisk of the Sun. All right, Meeple Town, so Dean is, I don't know what the deal is, the weekend must have gotten to him because he seems a little little uh, lethargic this I'm, morning. I'm fine. You know why? Because he turned 40. Oh my goodness. Because you just video. turned 40. And so now something's happened to your energy all of a sudden. That's right. All right, let's you play Tekendu. get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's play Tekendu. Um, whenever we started off the game, we went ahead and, and did a few things. Number one, we did get... Throw a couple of those up there if you don't mind, Dean. We did get starting resource cards and we did like a snake type draft. Same thing as you see in Teotihuacan, kind of thing like that. Um, just keep going? Wanna... Yes. All right. And I mean the same thing whenever you're getting the resources. Um, you're also going to start off with these little fellas here. Now, Dean picked that first. And he got a gold. I also got a scribe to start off, an extra scribe to start off the bat. And these little numbers next to the onk symbol, I believe that's an onk symbol, will break any ties if we have some ties. So with that being said, we also start with a in-game scoring card. And yeah, we'll talk about that later. We also start with a scribe and a gold. And then the reason I have these two things had to do with those cards that I just got. And Dean got some resources based on the two cards that he got. Oh, Dean didn't get some resources. Yeah, five resources. He got a lot of resources. And we both were able to build over here and cost no happiness. You, have, of course, have no idea what that means right now, but you will here in a second. This is a victory point game. We are going to play uh, four rounds. Then we're going to do a score. Where are we at here? One, <laughs> two, three, on? four. We're going to do a score after we do that. Then we're going to do four more. And then it's going to be the end game scoring. Boom. Ready? I don't you ready? Know. You just want to go? Let's, Let's just see. go. Let's do this. We don't really go into super details because we like to just dive in and play the game. I guess I should have checked out the dice before we started this game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was kind of looking. I have All right, so as that. you'll see, what we're going to do in our turn is we're going to select one of these. We're going to do one of two things. We're either going to do the god action that's associated with the die that we select, or we're going to use it for production. And yellow for a parchment, brown for bread, white for limestone, and black for granite. The grays are neutral. And then also, as you'll see, when you select it, we have these scales over here. There's a pure side and a tainted side, or pure or tainted die, excuse me, or you can't use them if they're up there in the top. We had a kind of a weird, a crazy weird roll to start off the bat, huh? And first place, and you can lose points, depends on the tainted and the pure die. So the first thing I'm thinking about right now is there's only two pure die totally out here. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna select four before we balance the scales. And next, after we select two, we are gonna roll some extra die and put them out there on the on the board. So that's good. Um, we'll roll two, four total. So do I want to take the risk? This will help me build production right off the bat. But it's all the way up here, which is not, it's the least valuable, but the most whenever it comes to victory points at the end of the game and between rounds. Up here, I could go ahead and take, yeah, I don't have the resources to do that. And I don't have any parchment. Wow! I really don't like this, Dean. I do. I know you do. All right, I'm taking this. I'm taking this one. It goes over to my pure side here. Then I can put one of my buildings out in this row. I will take it from here. This minus one bread has to do with the... Um, has to do with during scoring. And wow, I don't know. So this arrow means that I'm going to increase my productivity. This right here has to do with what I'm going to gain... I kind of want some parchment right now, and so I'm going to increase my parchment productivity and gain a parchment. All right. Boom. Like that? I don't know, actually. I'm not super excited <laughs> about it. I also lose one happiness because that's what the cost is to do that. All right. I like some of what I'm seeing out here. Um, so I've, I've got this strategy going on in my mind. I'm going to go ahead and show. Turn your head, John. You can't see this part. Okay. So I'm just kidding. You can see. Um, so Sorry, we're not going to play the whole game. The, right. The we're end just... game scoring card that I that I had says that I'm going to gain five points per statue built for the people, um, which is why when I took my four uh, granite, I had in mind that I wanted to go ahead and, 
and uh, build a statue for the people. Because look, I'm a leader for the people, John. That's what I'm trying to do. So what I would need to do is oh go over gosh. here and be able to build a statue. Um, unfortunately, that is a six tainted die. And because everything else, unless I'm missing, nope, I'm not. Um, everything else, like you said, is tainted. And I also would like some of these tiles down here. So I think what I'm gonna do right off the bat, I'm gonna spend a scribe like that. Okay. I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna move this one up to, yeah, I'll just move this one up to a five. All right, and this is going to be my, in the tainted spot. And then I'll be able to spend one, two, three. I'll drop those over there, my, yep. my papyrus. That way I'll be able to take three cards and I have a strategy that I want. Did you just give me three or two? I threw a gold in there, oh, so okay. yeah. I thought, um, you, I thought you were cheating up I'm, already. Jeez. I'm going to take this card that lets me um, uh, get two victory points I whenever should've. I produce uh, red, which yeah, is that's good. It's good to get some of those victory point producing cards right off the bat. And the during strategy. scoring, he pays no bread. So that's the right. cost up here, so he could really scorch up that track because he doesn't pay bread during scoring. That's right. Which, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that means if I'm going to end up with a lot of bread that I don't have to spend, then I'm probably going to be using bread up here. And look at this. There's a card here that says when you raise a pillar, always yes. activate oh, the ability man. of the pillar tile. So normally you would just get the points. Yeah. I'm going to get the the item that's there. And now I've yeah. got a little bit of a tricky, I'm in a tricky spot here because the other ones I really like as well. I just don't know which one to take. So this one will give me four bread, which will help me up here. I like that. This one's going to give me four uh, parchment. This one's an Anubis die action, which allows me to take any action around there. That is tricky. But I think what I'm going to do... And the Anubis action doesn't count towards your scales, which is really interesting. Right. Normally, I would almost always take that one. But this one's going to give me four papyrus whenever I produce... Shoot. And remember, when I produce bread, that helps. So that'll help me out a lot. That's just, a one-time use card, but... I thought you were going to do something else. I would have been tempted to... Uh, I didn't have the papyrus as the problem. Yeah. So Yeah, I was able to start off with a lot, which I, helped me. I got an extra scribe off the bat, and that was because I... The dicer are terrible and I wanted to be able to do an Anubis action, which now these are going to flip over. Now again, the Anubis action, oops. Probably should have thrown these up here They're just to give you an idea. So you've got some that have this background on there and those are going to be things that are going to benefit you throughout the game. And then these, uh, that's the one I already mentioned. This one is the one that's going to give me a one-time use of four papyrus whenever I produce um, resources. Hmm. Interesting. I'm interested that you didn't take the... Did I just put that there? That when you receive a horse bonus from a statue, gain a granite? Because I thought that maybe you would yeah. try to combo that. I considered that too, but yeah. this is that's why I picked up the papyrus card. Because I thought if I can you make can it back down do here that. again, I can take a lot of those. I really don't like where I'm at, Dean. What's going on right here? Because I would like to get some papyrus so that I could get some engine going right here. Because I only have one papyrus. Now I could go ahead and spend my... Um, my gold, which I'm seriously considering, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And you took some of the ones I wanted, which is what's what's kicking what I'm, what I'm kicking myself about. Um, that could be really good. That's a one-time deal, though. Okay, I am gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, three because I wouldn't be I'd only be able to get one if I take the two. It doesn't cost me anything, but I really feel like you got to kind of make best use, most efficient use of your actions in this game. So I'm going to spend the papyrus and a gold because a gold, I don't know if we mentioned that, but a gold is a, oh, right. a wild yeah. resource so that I can get two of these things. Um, this is hard to pass up just straight up for yeah. bread right uh -huh. off the bat. Based on here, I'll just show you my card. This one is a little bit intriguing because my cards can score me a ton of points if I'm getting, if I screech up that happiness track. So that's also, that's intriguing. The problem is if I do, there's, there's plenty of those out there is why I'm not going to take it right now. And I want to get an engine going as well. Um, so if I perform a Thoth action, which is right here, I'm going to gain two victory points, you know, receive a horse. I don't know how much statues I'm going for at the moment right here. Then the raw god action, I don't know how much I'm going to do that. I will probably do some of this and get some more cards, I would say, at least three times. This is at least worth six points to me. Probably eight. I'm going to take that, and I'm also just going to get some... I'm just going to do this to... Oh, man, that would be nice, though. Just straight up. 
not have to pay a cost and it could be an expensive one. I'm taking that. All right. So that means whenever I take this action or uh, which one is it or, or this action. So when I take this action or this action at some point, you know, but none of them really con. No, never mind. That's stupid. This will just give me what I need more. Okay. Are you ready? Whoo! Well, that's a lot of a lot I, of thinking there. I feel like Rado right now. You know, <laughs> he, he talks through a lot of his choices. I feel like I'm like that. Oh, well, look at that. It didn't take out the three plus. I don't have a lot of thinking to do in this one. Um, I will mention again, Ooh. I would like to build a statue. Now we do before. Oh, sorry. We uh, shift this. No, I haven't. Oh, no, I'm my bad. One. My B. I'm one. Actually, you always go two. first in every game, so I was assuming that you went first in this game. <laughs> That's probably true. Um, I would like to go over here and take this, but again, I don't want to take a level six tainted die when I already have a five in there, right? Um, especially when there's not a lot of opportunities to get more faith dice that I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, so I'll do this. I'm going to produce bread. I'm going to take this brown one, and I can produce exactly three bread. That's why I'm taking the level three one, and that will give me... Three bread. Three bread. But I'll also get four uh, papyrus while you're over there because you're I'm going to turn, turn this that, card in. Oh, my goodness. Here, I'll just... I'll just I'll, I'll give you another, give me another one. We can get. So Don't forget that one. That be let's talk different. about really quickly what would have happened if Dean would have taken another. So yeah. if he would have taken a uh, a different die value, which there wasn't any, that's available. But let's just say he took a five here. If he took a five, he can only produce three. He's greedy. And so not only does his three go over here because he took a tainted, but he takes two of the bread that he got greedy. He still gets his three, but he would take two if he had drawn a five and put them also in the tainted side. So, which can actually be beneficial at certain points. Like if you were high sure, on the, yeah. on the um, pure side, because you really want to be as close to the middle when we balance these out here in a minute as possible, though you don't lose victory points ever for being pure. So, okay. So now we're going to... For that, I just produce... Some bread, so I'm gonna give some two points. Oh, I think you, you did trying produce to bread. Trying to distract everyone so that know, that's what I do. I wouldn't get my points. Wow. There we go. Okay. I just really wanted to turn the obelisk. I know. Was... Sound effects are not in the game. What are you talking about? You have to get about? John to do that. You have to record in. his voice doing that. Yep. Now we're gonna shift the dice around. We are, and on the shaded sides, we're going to roll two. So, boom. And. Boom. All right, there we go. All right, gold and brown here. Actually, that's not going to change at all. Is yeah. that right? Okay. So we're going to look up here, and um, these are going to tell us, whatever side's going to tell us what type of, whether they're tainted or whether they're there. pure or whatever. So that black one's going to go over here. Down. That stays there. Those stay the same because they're still on the same. So this is the, the sunny side, the shaded side, and this partially is gray. Side. Is gray uh, Dark tainted side. over there? All right, gray is... Okay, it. let's just do this. <laughs> yes, and there. Normally, if we're sitting on the opposite sides of the table, that's not as big of a deal. No. Although, it can get in the way, for sure. It can. That, that's the truth. All right, there we go. Boom. Here we go. All right, so now it's my turn, and everything is shifted, which is interesting. Um, okay. What do I want to do now? I'm looking over here, and I'm seeing that... Um, and the balance is not too bad at the moment, but again, there's not as many of the pure die. And so my, my immediate, I'm immediately drawn to those to see what there are. Right here, I need bread to be able to put out the um, these, which is not good because I don't have them. Down here, I could once again build another, but then I'm going continuing to go backwards on my happiness. And I mentioned earlier that I wanted to kind of screech up that happiness track, but it would help me build. The thing about taking the two that's interesting is I also get a... Um, a gold for take being the first to build in the two section. But the problem with those twos and stuff is that they're just not very, they don't really increase production a whole lot, which is not great. While John's talking right now, a lot of nonsense. <laughs> uh, I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure this actually put, I put this on the wrong side. I think that I grabbed it this was, from It was, it was. Uh, so right. that's on the, the, uh, because there was only two and that was the one pure side. My bad. Yeah. I wanted to make sure, because I'm sure somebody noticed that I made that mistake. Yeah, you really, Really Dean in it this morning, baby. Really Dean in it. Um, my mind, it's getting, it's okay. fading at 40. You know, you know, Dean, mm, this is tough. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of grunting going on right now. Um, okay, let's just do that. 
I don't love it. I don't hate it. I kind of hate it. <laughs> That's going to really hurt me later on. Gosh, I'm taking this. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to. Oof. All right, I'm going to take that again, which then now I'm going to owe two bread. And I'm going to place this. I think I'm going to place it here. It's it. Well, you'll see how the scoring works here in a second. But I really want, hand me one of those limestones, please. I want to get my limestone production up. I think in this game I'm going to kind of go a little bit heavy that direction. So now I've got two limestone. Now I did that. I also get that for doing it done. Really took me a long time to not wow. do much there, huh? That took a long time. All right, I'm going to. When the dice all changes, like really. Yeah. It's intriguing. I'm a little, little in a, a little pickle right now. I think I'm going to go here mainly because I really do need to. Oh, there's a couple things I need to do. One, I need to make sure that I'm not losing so many points right now. So I'm going to take this and that's going to go to my pure side. When I do that, I'm going to spend, uh, let's see. I'm going to spend two bread. You ready for this, John? All okay. right. I'm going to spend two bread there. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put this out right here, I think. Let's see. I really want to change what I just did. It's too bad. I know. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to get three points times the columns that are out there. So what you're going to do is when you place that, you're going to... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh. You're going to pay your bread, put yes. that there. Um, then you're going to you're gonna get gain the a, points that are that are yeah, so all if the you, resources that are there. So if yeah. you had if you had a column which we haven't, no one's erected right. a column, then you would get three victory points per for the columns there. Since he doesn't have any, he's going to get to pick one of those. That's right. Resources. Um, there we go. Mine which is, is not great. No, it's not. However, you know I don't often take the three feathers. Feathers. However, this wouldn't be a terrible time to do that. Um, no. I have a lot of papyrus. I have a lot of the other things. Now, I could have put it somewhere else, but I didn't want to spend all of my bread right now. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the three. Well, They're actually mixed in with the scribes. So. Oh, there we go. Uh, so those are going to help balance the scales that he can use them to balance, which he kind of, you don't have to use them right now. I'm going to, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to because I have an idea of what. Well, I guess I don't necessarily have to put them out there yet. So I'll do that. I have in my mind that I'm going to use those, and I don't want to forget to do that. Um, then I did take a level two die, which is going to move up my population per however many dice I have. So there that put me a little higher. I would have loved for that to have been a much higher level die. It is what it is. That's my turn. Interesting. Okay, so this is going to be my last die to choose. Right now I'm perfectly balanced. So whatever I do is going to take me off kilter, except for... I'm actually gonna do an Anubis action right now. So I'm gonna spend two of my scribes so that I can pick any of these and then use it uh, for any of these. What's interesting is that I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one from here. And you might say, why would you do an Anubis action to do that? Because if I took a six from here right now, I would go all the way back here and lose um, two victory points. Yeah, because I would lose two victory points. I mean, I guess, because I, I would lose two victory points is it worth it to lose two victory points though, and maybe save my, and maybe save that Anubis action? That's a, that's a challenge. It's interesting. Um, is two is two scribes worth two victory? It probably. You know what? Give me my scribes back, Dean. I'm just gonna do it. I will not. Am I? <laughs> oh, because then I get a first turn. First, it doesn't matter. I'm not even gonna finish this game. I'm just gonna do it to show you what Anubis action is. I could again select any of these. Um, except for the ones that you can't select up top. So I'm going to select this black right here and I'm going to then place it here and I'm going to do this action. I could have done this action, that action, so forth or so on, but I'm going to do that and I'm actually going to place this. Um, see, I, I don't care about bread as much right now. These are hugely powerful down here because I'm going to be able to get four bread. My papyrus is okay. My, I think I'm going to increase my granite production and grab two of these. All right, so I'm gonna do that. It's gonna increase my granite production twice because of that arrow, one, two, and then I get one of my choice. And for my choice, I could go ahead and go all the way up here because it'll give me two victory points oh, during yeah. scoring. That's right. uh, but I don't think, I, I don't think I'm gonna do that at the moment. I think I'm gonna keep going up this white track so I can get some more uh, limestone. So you got I some did really that. good production going on. Well, right I figured you're doing better than me. I think I like what you're doing better. So I'm like, all right, let's just hype up on my production and see what happens, but go ahead. All right, now I am at a little bit of a 
crossroads for what I want to do. John is is moving on up those tracks over there. Um, Which at, at, during scoring, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll just talk about it yeah. Later. But well, I mean, we can say it now. Whoever has the highest amount of their buildings in these columns in is column. going to get points. It's going to get three points for each column. John's winning uh, three of those right now. <laughs> So, I, so during scoring, which would happen in, still won't happen for four more dice. Right, right. It won't. However, I do need to think, I got to get something over there that's going to help me out a little bit. So part of me is thinking I could go ahead and take this now to build my statue and put it over here that helps benefit that. But I could also take that yep. three die right here and then I could move up on one of those, uh, go ahead and put my building out on one of those, which I think that's what I'm gonna do. As much as I would like to build my statue, I just don't think that's gonna pay off really well right now. Okay. Um, so I am going to move down my population. I'm gonna take one of my buildings and then I'm going to for sure move it into this bread production uh, for a couple reasons. One, again, I get benefit for bread production, but also uh, this is going to give me uh, a benefit in both of those. So I'll move up on my bread. I'll move up on my papyrus. I've been making some really dumb decisions in this game. And then I will take a bread. Um, I Although, I, you kind of put me in a... Will you hand me a bread, please? Yeah. You put me in a position, John, where I, I was forced to do that because you put a lot of buildings out there. Which So I think that was a good, well, was a good move. Well, the part. move, that, the mistake that I probably <clears> made <throat> here... Well, it was this was a challenge. I should have used that one at least to increase my papyrus because if I want to go up happiness i've got to get a big papyrus production so that's what I, sh I should have actually that was what i should have done i should have i thought about going over here but then i already am winning this column so oh, it yeah. doesn't really matter <clears throat> if i go down here and i could have really scorched up that now I was t but you know who knows and how in future rounds i'm thinking that was dumb i shouldn't have done again I, I need i can't let john run away with that but i do i i do want to be able to build a statue in my next round and if I do that, that will help me. If I put it over here, which I probably would have to, it will help me with that area control aspect over there. All right, so let's do the scoring. Yep. All right, so the first, what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna balance these out. And because this Anubis action didn't cost me anything besides the two scribes, I'm perfectly balanced. So I will shift mine right there. I'm just gonna put one. Now what's gonna happen is uh, I'm gonna be heavier. Whoops, there we are. Um, I'm gonna be heavier on the tainted side. On the tainted side. But if I get if I go down three, I would lose a point. So I'm just putting one there to help me balance so it, it out a little a victory bit. Point. To lose it instead of losing a victory point. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we're gonna take these but off. But I will be yeah, I will be first next time. We're gonna throw these into the bag. And um, so we're not we shouldn't do scoring right now. Right. Uh, we, what we would do is we would once again just turn this obelisk and put the two die out there, two dice out there. And then what we'll do is we'll do that same thing one more time, score it. And that's midpoint in the game. Then the exact same thing, eight times, and then it's over. But let's go over the scoring just so that we can talk about this. We'll start down here at this section of the board. Right here, as Dean mentioned, whoever has the most in each column is going to win the three victory points down here. But if we're tied like here, whoever's is the highest. Yeah. So that's a really cool thing. Right? Yeah. You get less production, but you know I'm, I'm winning that. So right now, if the game was in scoring mode, which it's not, I would score nine points and he would score three points. Mm -hmm. I would never it would have been nine to zero. Yeah, yeah. It's not over. It's definitely <laughs> not over. This has no scoring um, during the thing. Now, this uh, population and happiness track does. These little guys are your happiness. I don't know if we mentioned that. These are your population. Because they look happy. They look so happy. Uh, for every happiness that you have on um, whatever, however many triangles you've got to with your happiness. Now, your happiness can never exceed your population. So I would have to be nine population to be able to have that. If I ended the round there, I'd get three points. That's three times two is six, so forth and so on. So you get three points for every triangle your happiness has gotten to. Another reason to move them up, as you can see, there's lots of card spaces here. Yeah. There's no cards there, John, but as you- There is, I put one there. <laughs> oh, you as you move- What am I doing? <laughs> As you move your population up, if you get w to the John. green area, you, you add those cards. If you get to the blue area, you get those, but you cannot purchase them until your happiness is in that area as well. I wonder if I took that one. I bet you did. Probably did. I probably cheated. I bet you did that every game we played that you probably, won, who which cares. is every game. All right, so you're going to do that. At the end of the game, I'll just mention, um, because it doesn't matter for uh, player turn, you get three points over here for being the closest to the center. This is the most intriguing part. So we did not talk about this. Let's just briefly mention this. If I take... Let's just say I took this five right here. Uh, then I I will uh, pick 
Oh, here we go. Oh, sorry. It's hard to see. Hard to see. <laughs> yeah. Let's take that down, honestly. <laughs> okay, so I would take this right here. Now, I don't have four of these, but pretend I did have four. I would take this thing. Now, I would get three victory points for doing so, and if this color matches, so this is on this, this is white, and this is white, so that's the sunny side, I would get the bonus on top of here. If it didn't match, for example, I took the dark side, then I would get the two points, and I'd be able to place it out, but I would not get that Thoth God action. Which, which is, is cool with here. the time, because it it is is really timing cool. is so important in this game. So what we're gonna do is then I'm going to place this into you know wherever I want, but, whoops a daisy but I'm gonna score a victory point for every color that matches, except for on the corners, I'm gonna score two victory points for every color that matches. So if I took this one, um, I could stick it in the middle where I have more chance to have two things going on here, which I'll share that in a second. Or I could just go here and that would be worth four victory points. That would have been worth four victory points plus the three victory points, which would be seven, That's a lot. which is quite a few victory points. Then on top of that, I would, uh, would have increased three population. Now, during scoring, um, we're going to score each one of these uh, columns for how many buildings that we have. So if I, this column would be worth two points because I have two of my own buildings there. Also, the interesting thing is if I had gone over here, I do score this for every, when you place it, if I had buildings for every building of mine or my opponents. That's right. the only time it counts for your opponent. So I would have gotten two more points for having that there. But Anyways. Which, if you're wondering why I put my building here, oftentimes our the way that we play, oftentimes our our uh, <laughs> our columns end up being on those corners. To score spots, those points to at the, score at those the beginning, points. Um, but it may not be worth it. Yeah, you know what true. I mean. Um, so that's the way you know we'll score those. We'll score. We'll also score points for every building that we have out and statue. If you have um, have put a statue out there, so we score points for that as well. And let's see. I think that is that's just about it. Yeah. I mean, hopefully I didn't miss something. And That's then we'll right. score these uh, cards. What's interesting, show those up on, put yours and mine up there together real quick. I just want to, uh, I already, uh, you told it to I already, stop. I already told you told it to stop recording. Mm. I mean, I already threw them up there at the beginning of the game. Well, I was gonna show you the symbols, the symbols and talk about those really, really quick, and then yeah. we can go. So you can only have three scoring cards, uh, which I really like, uh, in-game scoring, but they, the symbols at the top that Dean's pulling up there cannot match. So if I have two camels, I, camels, I have to pick which camel that I want to use. Again, three total and no two symbols can match. All right, how about, let's uh, put the obelisk back. Okay, now that the obelisk has been re-erected, what do you think about? By the magic the, of, of film editing, I was gonna say Egyptian. What do you think about these darn, <laughs> I don't more. even know where this is going. Um, this game is as old as you just asked me a question. You won't let me ask. Answer. So, what do you think about these old, these ancient games? Ancient yes. um, art and components. I think the components are fantastic. You've got these uh, chunky buildings that you're going to be putting on the board. These nice columns of your color. Um, the statues. You've got the obelisk, which I'm sure John will mention, and maybe not in a positive way um, <laughs> when he's talking about art and components. But I think it looks cool because, in fact. If you just have everything out on the board, you don't need the obelisk, I'll say that, start off. You don't need it, but the board is very flat. Adding that, thir that third dimension to the board yeah. is, is pretty cool, I like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. The art, uh, the art's probably not my favorite. The art on the box is beautiful, I think. As mm. far as the board goes, I don't really pay much attention to it, so I, I guess I'm kind of I didn't even show this that. because I was so disappointed by your lack of enthusiasm, I forgot to show the box, so there it is. Okay. Right. That was, that was, that was something. All right. I, just get, I wanted them to be able to get a good look at it. Okay. So I've got a, a love hate really. I don't have a hate relationship with this. It's, here's the thing it looks fantastic. It really does. Like, it really does make the board look awesome. Like, got that 3D element that's coming off the board. It's really nice. This thing, it doesn't attach. So it's kind of wonky. Now, the thing is, though, is maybe it doesn't attach because sometimes it's hard to see and you might just want to remove it like I did. Yeah. So I don't know what they were thinking about that. I'm thinking that might actually be a possibility that the because it would if it was attached, then you definitely would have to get up. So I don't know. It's okay, but I mean, it, it wouldn't take much. That would just to what John just did happens every time. Has never it happened hasn't. again. I agree. It has never happened. So I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm just gonna say that's the way it is. It's not a big deal. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, that's the way it, it is. It's not a big deal. I think you spray paint that gold and like, I, like sparkly. Like gold, yeah. I think the components are great. This is exactly what I want in the game. I like the art a lot. I, I think the board looks nice. I really do. It's not like blow. It's not blow my mind, but it's really nice, solid. It gives me it's vibes nice. of uh, what is it? Tribune. Um, 
Never. Like it's just that overhead, like far off overhead, people walking around doing different things. I like um, it. Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike it. I just, I'm not, I don't really pay much attention to it yeah. on the board. Okay. Yep. But uh, I think the card art's really nice too. Oh, it has a oh, and the, feel. the iconography I think is really well done. So like when you look it's at hard things, to do it's these. clear. Now these can be kind of tricky when you're trying to figure out how the scoring works, but they are. but I do think that these are helpful at the same time once you figure out how the scoring works. Up That's there. right. So anyway, gameplay. That's right. Hold up though. Oh my goodness. Hold up though. All right. One one other like everything else is really good, but one thing that I, I really wish they would have done in this game is they have this player aid, and the player aid. I'll be frank. For me personally, hasn't been very helpful. No, we've not. Um, I've not used, I've not it, used it. The dice affinity is not that bad. Like you can see, like which resources are off most often on what sides and stuff is 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 cool to have. But I just don't understand why they didn't make a scoring player aid. Because I also didn't mention that you scored. I did earlier, but when we were doing the scoring, you get two points for being a, how many you have up here. You're also going to score points for your statues. I forgot to talk about your player board. So if you had all your statues gone, it's worth 21 points. You'll get points for being up here as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, I wish. I have to pull the book every single time. I play this a lot just to make sure I don't forget ever, anything. And I really wish they would have had a player aid that had... What are all the scorings that take place? That's right. Don't know why. Yeah. That was a big disappointment. Everything else I really like. Gameplay. Gameplay. You may go, you want to go. I'll go. Um, there's a lot of things to really like about this game. I like dice drafting in general. That's, mm -hmm. that's you know, a mechanism that I enjoy. But the way that the scales work for dice you drafting, I think is so cool. Yeah, I love that a lot. I love that you really do have to think about uh, difficult decisions. I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to be able to build a statue, and I was going to that next round. But it would have been helpful if I was able to do that right off the bat to be yeah. able to get a gold. But I just did not want to take that six tainted dice yeah. right there, which makes it, um, you know, you're, you're thinking really challenging. Now, I will say the negative, the flip side of that is uh, I think that that becomes lucky um, depending on what comes out there. It is. It's dice rolling. There is no questioning that. It is, it is lucky. Now, you have to pay attention to the obelisk and how it's turning around, how it's changing the... Uh, the the value not the value it's changing the um, the spot that the dice are going to go into each round so you have to think through that and think ahead but I do think the negative part for me is that that can be lucky and you can really get um, you can get hosed here's honestly. what I like about it and I do and I won't disagree that like if you have if I had a strategy of going here and we were getting really high die every single here every single time here that would be yeah lucky a hundred I don't, don't 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 disagree at all but what I like about it is it causes you not to just lock in on one strategy. Like, I think that in this game, if you lock in on one strategy and the dice don't come out the way you want, you have to be willing to pivot and go, okay, I've got to focus here. I can, I can start shifting maybe my direction this way or that way. Sure. It, it causes you to not, to people to not be able to go, this is the only thing I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna go super crazy on that. Yeah, now the problem though is if, uh, okay, let me say this first. I don't, luck in games is not like something that's a deal breaker yeah. for me. I don't, I don't mind luck, but I can see how that can be frustrating to people because um, I agree with what you're saying, but let's say you've built all your strategy around one thing. And then, don't do that. And then the, the dice just aren't, but you do have to lock into a couple things. You, you do. Can't, you can't spread you yourself out all, all over because you're going to lose. You do. Let's say I lock into, which I have, building these and then building statues. Like that, In my mind, that's what I'm going to be doing. And the bread, it was coming out low numbers. You right. were being able to get good production. Which that was fine. I didn't mind the, yeah. the bread coming out low production. I actually wanted that to come in less than three or, or at three or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that was happening for me and the dice weren't coming out. But John has built his strategy out of something else and the dice are coming out for him. That, that's going to be frustrating. Because you're not going to be Yeah, I get it. I, yeah, it's really weird. Just agree with this me. is one that no, no, I don't disagree <laughs> with what you're saying. I just, I actually just, li I like that you have to kind of go different directions and you can't totally lock in. Sure, and if you like that, but I, but I could see that being a frustrating aspect sure. for people. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I, I but I, I don't know. I, I, I love the way the dice work in this game overall. I, I do too. Yeah, uh -huh. I, it was very difficult that first round because of how many pure few how how few pure dice came out, and I loved that because it made me think. This is why for me I really like this game because it feels different. Yeah, every time I play the game, not only because of the way the dice come out. Yeah, you know, I mean, like Dean said, you're looking at the shaded side and stuff and to think of how it's going to happen, but. For me, one of the biggest positives of this game are these cards. The biggest positive for me, I got something itching my nose. Can you scratching my nose for me for a minute? 
But the these <laughs> cards, no, these cards right here, like they really change the game because they can you really kick start John. Yeah, they yeah. can, but they can like look at this one that Dean has. I mean, he doesn't have to pay bread during scoring. Uh -huh. He gets two points though for every time he produces bread, so he can put a bunch of buildings out right. there. So it can it, it's a big deal, right? These these are really nice when you raise a pillar. It doesn't have to have that shaded thing or the sunny or the dark side like I mentioned earlier. So he can really focus on this, which, mm. which is what he's doing. He's hyper focusing on these two things. Really cool. I I love. Absolutely love the way the cards work in the game. Yeah, yeah, and that that was going to be my. This actually, I mentioned the dice and how much I love that, but those cards are are what really really make the game. I mm -hmm. think. And the other the other part. So I, because you just talked a lot about that, I don't, I don't have to go into that. But just know this is great. These cards are great, yeah. and they're they seem overpowered, but they're all overpowered. Or not overpowered. They're all really powerful. They're really powerful. Which is, I love that when games do that really powerful. And cards. it costs to get them though, like getting the papyrus yeah. and stuff, or using a whole action just to get one. Uh -huh. Yeah, could, that's that's a lot in this game. Yeah, that's right. Um, I I, I like, also this is cool. yeah. There's I was gonna say real fast this and how this works for lots of different things for scoring, how this works for how you gain your cards. Um, I think is really cool. But yeah, this is this is really cool too. Like the the way that you use area control to gain points, but you're also moving up in your tracks, which can potentially give you points. But if not, they're they're giving you lots of production, yeah. which is good because resources are tight in this game and you want to be able to screech up those. But you also don't necessarily want to waste an action to be able, you know, I don't want to spend five different actions to be able to take bread at low numbers. I, yeah. I would rather, if I can, be yeah. able to have a higher up there so that I can take a higher uh, bread production, yep. which I think is really cool. I like that. I feel like the game is really well balanced. Like I mentioned earlier, it seems to be, yeah. I like yeah. how, like if you go up here, which isn't as good of a action, you're up higher for the points down here at the bottom. So it's like, I don't know. It just seems like, I feel like there's a lot of different ways to score points. It's a point salad game, you know, and but they seem as for however me I've played a decent amount now. It seems really well balanced. So uh -huh. yeah, um, and player order yeah. it really matters a lot in this game, which sure. I I find myself liking more and more in games. Smartphone Inc was like that. Player order mattered a lot. I think this matters a ton. Yeah, because getting these cards that are going to give you the resources that you need, but also because of what we talked about with the dice that are out there, you want to make sure that you have first pick at those, yeah. right? Um, because you don't want to get hosed and locked in to taking all these tainted dice that are going to make you lose points. Um, so I think player order really matters. I don't think, again, like, I don't think you're guaranteed to win if you take first player every time. You still have to think strategically about how that works, but you have a better advantage to take the dice that you need. I mean, it would really matter, for example, if Dean wanted to build a building and there's only one here. Yeah. And it's not going to come around for a couple more turns, like him going, man, I need to get that first because if John takes that, yeah. then I, yeah, it's a big Which deal. is why the, the scribes are so important because if you take two of those, you can take an ooh, you Anubis, can take an Anubis action. action uh, and those Anubis actions are very valuable. Yep. All right. All right. So let's uh, let me address one thing before final thoughts. All right. And that is the two player version. We're playing two players. Oh, I've, right, heard, yeah. I've heard some people say it's not as exciting with two players, and I would agree. Like this is a little bit less. Ex it's more of a chess match. I don't know if it less exciting is the right word. It's a little more tit for tat. Oh, he goes there. Okay. And then and then having you know multiple three or four players playing. This is not maybe as exciting when you're placing the things out because of that. But I now going into final thoughts. I love this game of two players. I don't really see what the big complaint is about it. Um, yeah, it's better. I would probably be better at a higher player count. But also the thing is, is y'all, there's some AP that can happen in this game. So playing with four you players could, could really take a while. I was scratching my shoulder. No. <laughs> could really take a while. I'm absolutely fine with playing this all day long at two players. I love this game. I think that Daniele Tassini, once again, crushed it. He just crushes it all the time now, I feel like. He's becoming one of my favorite designers. I think that this game is extremely good. I would say, like, Teodor Wakan is, like, is probably my favorite of his designs right now. This is probably my second favorite of his designs right now. It's, it's, that, it's just, it, I think it's super solid. These cards are awesome. Changes the game. You've got engine building in this game. You have dice drafting. I mean, Dean, this is exactly what I want in a game. You put it all in a package. And I do, I do understand what you're saying about the it could be a little frustrating with with the luck of the dice here and there but i also like how it makes you pivot so yeah. there you go and it may so what's your what's your score oh yeah that's what we do <laughs> nine out of ten yowzers this is Yowzers. this is right now this is my favorite game i've played this year there's still a lot more games to play um especially that are coming out right now but right now this this just bumped this just jumped uh, alma mater for sure. Uh, hands down, I like this better than Alma Mater. Okay. 
Um, you don't. Not my game of the year. No, it's not. But I still really like this one. Now, you know, if you if you followed us for a while, you know how I feel about Tassini games. Like, they don't necessarily draw me in. I uh, didn't love Teotihuacan. I did not love uh, Zulkin, but I liked it a little bit better. Yeah. This is my favorite of, of his game, for sure. Um, I, there's a lot to really like about this game. And, you know, I, I do still think that, that the dice can be frustrating. What it does, though... Why that's frustrating for me is because it makes the game really tight. And I don't always love games where I feel like I, I'm forced to pivot the direction if I have this strategy going on. You like to just roll. Well, especially like if if I feel like I'm having to pivot, but John doesn't because the dice are rolling I get his that. way. So like that's, I don't that's disagree with that. kind of a frustrating thing for me. But uh, but I think overall, just because this is, um, you know, I tend to like more mid-weight to kind of maybe mid-heavy. This is more on the heavier side of... Uh, of what I love, I, I do like Alma Mater better. But I don't think they really compare that that no, much. No, they don't compare. I was just that was just. But for, for like the game games, of the year, yeah. Uh, so but far. I still really like this one a lot. I, you know, if John says, "Hey, let's play, uh, let's play Tekkenin." Yes, I will play this game. But it's not one that I feel the need to pick up because it's not like my jam fully. But I still really like it. So there I'm gonna give go. this one a seven and a half. Uh, one that's pretty high for this type of game that I'll you know I'll play this game. John mentions it. Usually um, willing to play, but I really you don't. You won't suggest it very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going to. Ada is suggesting it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd like to finish out the game right now because I, I feel like I have a. I think you're doing. I do. I think you're doing. <laughs> Maybe not. Probably not. But uh, now that I've messed up the whole board, it's going to screw it up now. But anyway, high praise from us. That's a nine from John. That is a seven and a half from me. Tell people how they can get in touch with us. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to it. You can go to MeepleTownGames.com to check out all of our stuff. Maybe even buy some MeepleTown swag. Swag. Uh, at MeepleTownGames on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to MeepleTown. Thanks for joining us. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at MeepleTownGames. And connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.